Let me check what the... So right now this... Oh, I'm sorry. The command I'm wanting to look at is right here. D3 test. All right, and then to build this, you just run make. All right, um, clear, get status, make. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, I just upgraded my system today. All right, uh, make pretty, please. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Okay, what? Oh. They should probably look into making that a proper sub-module. Um. Instead of having to do the make get stockfish, you could use uh, a get sub-module to automatically clone this for you. Although the hardest step here isn't the get clone step, but it's the downloading the neural network that is slow. Anyway. I mean, it works. It's good enough. Alright. Wait. Uh, hang on. Time D3 test. Do 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 Newt, 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 newt. <laughs> All right, Gotanda purchased a game on Steam called Let's Learn Shogi. Huh. Hmm. Wait. Katanda also says, I will be on the streaming if I will be back home early at 21 JST. 21 JST is like what? They're on UTC plus 9. I'm on minus 6. So if I take away. Okay, it's like 2 a.m. Cool. Am I good at math? I don't know. The 6 and the 9 makes a 15. If I take that away from the 9 JST, 9 PM. Take away 15. Oh, 6 AM. That's actually decent. I could be crazy. Huh. Let me think. Oh, Lee Shogi. Yep. Shogi openings are difficult. Um, I had a crazy thought recently. Where was it? One of the projects I'm following, one of the zillions of projects I'm following. Uh, shit. Where'd it go? Somewhere there's at least one of these things is a... Okay, there's a Markov J chain generator. There was another one I was following, but really any Markov chain generator would do. I would like to see... Just, like, some... Yeah, here's, like, Markov generation applied to music. Um, I'd like to see one that generates um, moves for Shogi. Like, just entirely based on Markov chains. 
So the notion is that, hey, that move looks kind of sort of familiar in this position. <laughs> sure. Although it doesn't have to have any knowledge of what Shogi is to come up with the moves. Um, right now it's primarily used for building markup models of large corpora of text and generating random sentences. So... Yeah, that's... They did well documenting this, actually. So unless this is some crazy license restriction or takes, like, a barnyard of animal sacrifices to get this set up, maybe I should take a closer look at this one. Um, so, like, here's an example of make a sentence. You could just, like, stick a whole bunch of kifu in there or something and have it spit out something that might be intelligible. <laughs> Probably not, but, you know, it's the thought that counts. Um, so, I just say watch releases, and, you know, if a big interesting release shows up, we could get that sometime. Um, yeah, I think it'd be fun to just learn Shogi openings according to Markov chains. Uh, I'm sure some openings play better with that concept than others. Anyway, um, so dead draw detector. All right, on GitHub, make takes 15 seconds. The test step takes 5050. And my machine, it took 65 seconds. Anyway, um, so D3 chess. Dead draw detector is an implementation of a decision procedure for checking whether there exists a sequence of legal moves that allows a certain player to checkmate uh, their opponent in a given chess position. So, not dead draw. Uh, I misused this term when I was talking about the AI. Uh, Lee Chess had a forum where we were discussing this particular engine, and eventually, at some point, I slipped and when I meant to say helpmate, I said dead draw, and it's not the same thing. For example, here, um, the rook can checkmate, but the bishop cannot checkmate. No matter how you uh, rearrange these pieces, bishop cannot checkmate against rook. So, yeah. Um, the word I was looking for was helpmate. That's the word that's been used in chess problem generation uh, by problemists for decades. Um, yeah, here's another. This one is a dead draw. No, it's not. No, I'm sorry. This is a bishop on c2. I am so tired. I thought this was a pawn. No, that's a bishop. So this is a dead draw on the left. This on the right, the rook in theory could win it. Um... So, it's not hard to see that neither player can checkmate in the left side diagram. Is it? What makes that so easy? I mean, for you and me, we could figure this out pretty readily if we just try a whole bunch of moves. On the right, to us, that feels harder. But, anyway. And then there's a question of what's easy for a machine and what's hard for a machine to figure out. And here's instructions for running this thing. Um, hmm. So. What have they been up to with this project lately? They've been up to update readme, minor, resized images, minor, minor, typo, cleanup and check to avoid seg fault. I have no idea what any... oh. Okay. Yeah, I guess they're just updating the readme documentation stuff. Fine. Yeah, so their most recent interesting contribution was taking 30,000 Lee Chess games and saying for these 30,000 games that timed out, determine um, which of these actually had a uh, no possibility of checkmate. So out of 30,000, 
my code running on the Leechess server, not this thing, but my code that I wrote in Scala that executes near instantaneously, correctly decided the outcome 29,997 times out of 30,000. That is to say, I have a 0.01% failure rate. Um, it's more than people would like to see. And so, like, here it shows this is a link to the game. There's this one game that was decided incorrectly. I just stick that in the browser, navigate to the last position. And indeed, we see that after black moves, there is no way uh, that black can still checkmate. So this is one error on my part. Maybe this is the more interesting thing, is I could improve my static analyzer that already runs on Lee Chess to handle some of these... Oh, not this. All right, let's take a look at this other position. Uh, didn't occur to me that, like, maybe there are some ways I could improve this. So, uh, white moves. After any white move, black has no moves. Um, yeah, actually, no, this is the reason I didn't change any of this code. There are some of these things that I might have been able to detect, but then I start entering boundary conditions of, um, well, why didn't you find this slightly harder? And then this very slightly harder thing, and just it, on and on and on it goes. Um, but yeah, it's true that black cannot win in this position after moving the king this direction. If they move the king the other way, they would have chances to win this. But now after any white move, black has no moves. Um, so the corner case for something like this, uh, here's the FEN string. Why this is so problematic um, hang on, let me go back a move. Grab this FEN, drop it into the analysis board. Right over, come on. I just lost the bottom part of my browser to my Windows toolbar. Alright, there it is. Alright, so this itself doesn't look so problematic, but suppose we throw in a bishop on the first rank. So 2b5, there we go, there's our bishop. Uh, this is different because the bishop could sack itself. So this is, yeah. Whereas contrast that with like if this king were up here instead, then king in the corner uh, would be a draw. So this is why I did not in my Leechess solver, try to solve such things. Uh, hang on, what's this? Why is... okay. So, what now? Um, wait, we've got... <laughs> Uh, I'm amused. Um, wait. If we've got Stockfish already running, couldn't we just have it dump out the board diagram right below this? Or would be that be too much output, perhaps? Hmm, I wonder. Um, I mean... Uh, where do we print the word unwinnable? And to what extent... Oh, that's not it. Uh, D3chess.cpp Unwinnable line standard endl. So we've already constructed the position here. Um, there's got to be some way that I could do the same thing as the D command to get the position output. Um, hmm. 
I mod 3000 to zero in running tests. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yes, I'm confused. There is some way that I could get the board diagram to print out. Um, wait, I want to look at UCI, CPP. Isn't there a command just lowercase d? Sync C out, POS. I just have to, like, output the POS, and that's it. Why didn't this author do that? <laughs> that would have been so beautiful. Um, it's just like that. And then you do the make. Wait. Oh, hang on. Unwinnable. Standard endl. Alright. Have to make sure we're using the C stand or C plus plus standard library. Um, all right, we got thirty minutes until Edvin to code. All right, and now if I do time D three test, when it prints out the unwinnable position, we should also get the diagram right below it, which is honestly more interesting than anything else here. Most of the time, uh, Lee Chess does get it correct. Bum, 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 Why didn't they just do that? <laughs> ah, all right. That's fine. Unwinnable now. Where's this line defined? Oh. Okay. Intended winner. Um, hmm. I had hoped that somehow in here we would have um, just the last element of the game, or the, the line, which would just be the URL part. Uh, also, I guess I don't need this extra... End line in here, do I? And then we can run this again. I wonder if this would support multi threaded operation, not that it even needs to. Oh, right. So I was curious um, if something like Valgrind could be used to identify areas for optimization in this code. Uh, but I also haven't proved the correctness of it just yet. Um, so that could be a useful thing to prove. Yeah, so when we're inputting the line... We're getting the FEN as well as the game URL. I just think that board visualization 
helps a lot with identifying what's going on. Um, all right, so I say that, like here, um, checkers g5, so the queen is checking the king on h4. Uh, there's a rook on a3. So the only move white can play is pawn takes g5 checkmate. Therefore, since white's only legal move checkmates black, um, then black cannot claim a win on time here. So. That's an interesting thought or observation. Um... Yeah, I wonder what else I could do. Wait, so get line is a built-in. Well, we use we use uh, standard for everything else, but get line we're using out of some standard I/O library, so we're not needing to STD scope it. Um. I'm also curious, like, why did they pick 3,000? Anybody else would have picked some, like, something that divides evenly into 10,000 here. Um, Alright, what else can we do? I've not added any value other than that fun little printout. Intended winner. If is unwinnable. All right, well, let's take a look. Okay, we do have this definition here. How much code can we fit on our screen? Probably should have started with this perspective. All right, so apply iterative deepening, find mate, may look deeper than max depth on rewarded variations. All right. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Wait. So, our make file says we're going to get stockfish from the official stockfish repo. Um, doesn't say anything about how often we update our version of stockfish. But I guess the version I just cloned is recent. Um, are there any other optimization flags or stuff I need to pass here? So, D3, copy main into the Stockfish folder, copy D3 chess, copy all this, build J, um, actually, well, this is going to benefit me more than anyone else, but yeah, let's build more than one file at a time. Um, In fact, if I just get rid of the J flag, it should build with my default number of jobs. And yeah. Um I'll copy the stockfish file back into this directory. Alright. Um There's nothing special I have to do to like to optimize this build, right? This should try to optimize by default. Let's see, yeah, by default, it picks optimize equals yes. And I think the only flag I need to pass is the one defining which architecture I'm building for. And that's fine. Oh yeah, here's all the defaults. Whatever. So that I don't need to do any trickery there. Um, is there any trickery in main dots? No, there's no code here. Options threads. Interesting. Um, <laughs> hmm. Right. And I 
So the next thing I want to do is keep searching for this. If there's anything blatantly inefficient here. Um, yeah, no, I just need better tooling. Like there's a way to run Valgrind to try to identify blocks of code that um, are less than optimal. Wait, I could do a profile build. Oh god. What would that even do here? Um, profile guided optimization. This is a, well, I would need a set of benchmark positions. Yeah, a PGO build would be difficult without a, a good corpus of benchmark positions. Um, although we do have one. Wait, that's it. 471 lines of code. Print result. Oh, this is why there's so much code. Just because there's like, here's the namespace night distance, and there's other tables of data that occupy lots of lines of code that don't necessarily have a lot of complexity. The next function computes the night distance between two squares. Note that this can be calculated from just the rank distance and the file distance between the squares following these tables. Exceptionally, distance uh, from A8 to B7 equals 4 cannot be computed from the tables, as well as symmetric cases in other corners. Um... How frequently is is corridor called? Wait, what? Okay, we're checking if either of those two is a corner. Um, gosh, I hope that. Um, I hope the compiler can optimize that. Because that's like eight if statements that could be done better. Um. Hmm. The first is one and the second is one. And is corner this or is corner that? Yeah. That's, uh. Oh. Is it also 8 moves from B7 to any other corner? Probably. Um, B7, A5, B3, A1. Ditto B7, D8, F7, H8. And from B7 to H1 can't be any faster than that, right? D7, C5, E4... F2H1. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Getting from B7 or any square diagonally one off the corner uh, to any corner is equal to four. Um, Alright, so first and second tables. Uh... There's this night distance, and there's a third table. Huh. Wait. No, why would you... This does not work well with cache lines. Well, we don't know the size of the cache line. But having one big array... Um, is this really faster? Yeah, I wonder. I would be surprised. Um... Anyway, a reward variations that make pieces closer to a mating position in a corner. The corner will be in the beef rank of the intended winner, and the corner color depends on the existing pieces in the position. Okay. Jeez, this is complicated stuff, man. Set target, going to square... Need loser promotion. Um, oh, right. 
So, um, I forget. Mim stockfish source type stat h. Alright, so types pawn, knight, bishop, rook, queen, king. So here we've got. Oh goodness. Somewhere we had a combination of rook or knight or bishop. Yeah, here we are. You don't need to bitwise in that this way. You can just like make one function call and that does the bitwise magic for you. Winner has just a knight and loser has pawns and or queens. Wait, what? The winner has a knight and loser only has pawns and queens. I'm not sure this is correct. So, if a player has pawns, those can promote. Um, and they can under-promote, not just promote. Winner has th same colored bishops, and loser has no knights or bishops on the opposing color. Okay, well, this is complicated. Oh, I see. Impossible to win. Yeah, I'll just put my... I'll undo my code change because this is unrelated to the code that executes in the cases uh, for impossible to win. Decide whether a piece is getting closer to given a square or slow pieces. Is to check if the position is getting closer to the targeted mate. Turn distance from two square or two move with relative to square that is less than distance of the origin of this move to the target square. And why are you asking this question? I wonder. Because if the qu square in question is always a corner or something like that, you could maybe specialize this function. Uh, target here. Set target. Huh. I don't know. It's an interesting search routine. Wait, piece type promoted is equal to promotion type of M. Um, <sighs> yeah, this is not good. They have gone out of their way to avoid an if statement here. And while it's true that branching statements do cost performance-wise, um, having unreadable code has a real cost, too. All right, what else is there? If variation is equal to reward, new depth. All right, so this reward thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's an enumeration or something like that. I could look at that later. Um, not reward variations. When the loser has queens. A critical material and loser has a queen or more than one queen. 
Um, variation secret reward. Oh, I see. So it's not a rewarded variation in that case. Critical material, wind material. So, critical material. Maybe this doesn't need to be in this ordering. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a really simple comparison. Um, so checks if we have less than or equal to a bishop remaining. Yeah, I wonder how some of this could be reordered to improve performance. Um, I see. If a mate was found, we return the mate score plus one. Okay, fine. How much time do we have till Advent to code? We got nine minutes. Honestly, I'm not going to get anything done in the next nine minutes. Um, so, other than babble and make that fun little visualization, I'm not sure that I've done particularly much. I see there's a double ended queue. I'm curious what the merits of this double-ended queue are. Although that is one of the more performant data types in C++, so I shouldn't bother with it. Um, well, let's see. I changed this to output every 2500 positions. So... Um, Oh, that's interesting. Job server unavailable using J1. Add plus to big parent rule. I'll have to look into what all that means. Um, wait. Okay, here it is. Time D3 test. Yeah, let's call this the last run so I can take a break and get set up for advent of code. Um... Which, I'm not going to live stream because you think that this is fun. Um, watching me spend and however much time it takes to code, advent to code, is going to be not as fun as this. Here we at least get a nice little visualization. Uh, and we get to see all the errors. Like, there's an error. And this is pretty readily understandable. Again, like, after the king moves, there's nothing that uh, black can do to checkmate white, because white's in stalemate. Huh. Yeah, perhaps I could detect some positions where it's already stalemate statically. Um, perhaps Leeches could do that. However, the problem is that in other positions, uh, it's not immediately a stalemate, but every single legal move produces a stalemate. Those positions aren't the most common, but they still happen. Um, anyway, this was exciting. Not really. But yeah, Shogi's hard. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good night.